Earlier in the newscast, China is responding to President Joe Biden referring to its leader as a, quote, dictator. The president made the remarks last night just as the secretary of state left Beijing. China's officials called the remarks, quote, extremely absurd and irresponsible. We go now to John Elliott, managing partner of Brighton Strategy Group and former chief spokesman for the National Security Council. John, always great to have you on. Uh, first off, your thoughts on these remarks by President Biden and the timing, you know, considering Antony Blinken's recent meeting with President Xi, what type of impact do you think this could have on an already strained relations? Well, thanks for having me, Tracy. It's always good to join you and your viewers. I think that President Biden He's frankly right. I mean, President Xi is a dictator, but to say that, especially in a donor, a donor setting, is not the smoothest move. And to your point, what it is, is this is going to be another test for him and that he's teed up and that's bad for him to have teed it up because what it is, is he's either going to have to climb down from that statement, which is a true statement, and in which case he's going to damage himself politically because everybody knows that he's a dictator, or it just adds another pressure point in the mix right now, where you have here, just to review the bidding, you've got Tony Blinken going over to essentially cap in hand to meet with the Chinese government and the Chinese leaders, including Xi. And there was no deliverable that was on the table other than that they invited the foreign minister from China to come back here and meet with Biden as well. So it's sort of a there, but there's nothing concrete, nothing on fentanyl, nothing on stopping the spy base that's going up in in Cuba. There's nothing on human rights. There's nothing on anything about the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic, which came from the Wuhan lab, has killed 1.1 million Americans and 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 a little bit more than that. And yet there's been no call for not even accountability. Uh, it's just transparency. People want to look and see exactly what happened at that lab. And there was nothing to that effect. So you got the spy issue. You've got the lab issue. You've got the You've got the fentanyl issue and whatnot. And so now you're just adding one more to the mix where Biden's going to have to decide, do I tell the truth and do I admit this or do I go, go ahead and, and also submit to the Chinese on this issue as well and say, well, wait a minute, that was a mistake. You're not a dictator. Everybody knows he's a dictator. But, but by Biden putting that on the table, he's just adding pressure to his own relationship with China. Yeah, it's a real quagmire there. Uh, on a different note, John, the Pentagon revealed that it overestimated the amount of weapons that it sent to Ukraine. Uh, by more than $6 billion over the past two years. How does something like this happen? I mean, we're not talking about a few dollars here or there. I mean, it's a pretty big accounting error. And also, what's going to happen to that surplus? Well, what it is right now is that there's this is a cry for more money from Zelensky. He's in the middle of his offensive right now, which has not gone well by all by his own admission, actually, yesterday, he admitted that that it's a lot more slow going than he thought it was. And so this idea that there's six billion dollar shortfall and what we've provided him, that just shows that, number one, there's not a lot of accountability or accounting rather on what's going on with those funds that let's just take a step back on this one as well. We have put out the U.S. taxpayers have put out one hundred and sixty billion dollars to the Ukraine conflict, to helping Ukraine, both on the humanitarian level and then also tens of billions on the materiel, in other words, the actual war materiel level. And so if you're, first of all, that's a huge commitment by our tax taxpayers. That could build more than 10 of the best aircraft carriers that we have, and then that would help us against China in a big way. We've only got 11 carriers now. So this would almost double the fleet or more than double the fleet of aircraft carriers. But look, that's a lot of money to be spending over there. And this just shows, once again, that there's no accountability for that money. And look, that's $6 billion. That's not pocket change. So they better get to the bottom of where that went. Yeah, back here in Washington uh, earlier today, as you know, Special Counsel John Durham testified before the House Judiciary Committee regarding his report into the FBI's probe into former President Trump's 2016 campaign and what was alleged to be possible ties uh, to Russia at the time. John, what were your takeaways from this testimony today? Look, I haven't followed the entire testimony because it, it was a long testimony, but the, the Durham report in general and what he was testifying about is the fact that there were found very transparent irregularities in terms of getting the whole probe about the Russia business going with President Trump and that this was something that hobbled his presidency. I mean, he's a strong man. He can go through it. But this is something that was that was a dead weight that that Democrats through this uh, th through this dodgy dossier put on the president in this completely baseless probe with Mueller that President Trump had to overcome this and he had to deal with this in addition to all the 
all the pressures on him from the office. And it just what Durham's report showed is this was absolutely a fraud and that it was known at the top levels of the FBI and the Justice Department that this was indeed a fraud. And it's just sad that, uh, once again, this is something that he had to face. And if you see it, all the chips and bricks and whatnot that they're throwing at the president in so many ways right now in the different indictments and whatnot, number one, uh, it's a disgrace that that's happening. Number two, it just only strengthens him with his own base, which is a good thing. And Boy, he's a really re resilient man. I was on the campaign, on his campaign in 2016, and was at the White House with President Trump. And look, we can't even keep up with the man. I mean, the man is in approaching, you know, 76, 77 years old, and we're half his age, and we can't even, can't even follow his schedule. So, anyways, impressive man. But this just shows that Durham was right on the mark, and people should pay more attention to his report. All right, we're gonna leave it right there, John. Always great to be with you. Appreciate the insights. Thank you, Tracy.